Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who spoke light into creation, who calls us to listen and follow, who sends us to shine like stars. Amen. Amen. Let us come before God, confessing our sin. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against our sisters and brothers and against you. We cherish the values of this world. We cause others to stumble. The earth is wounded by our excess. Have mercy, O God. Forgive us, renew us, and raise us up on eagles' wings, that we may do your will with courage and delight. Hear the voice from heaven. You are my own, my beloved. God gives power to the weary and strengthens the powerless. Be cleansed, be healed, for in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness of your sins and the revealing of God's reign. Amen.
continue with the Kyrie on 157, and then our hymn of praise is Shine, Jesus, Shine, 671. From the one who was and is and who is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the first fruits of the resurrection, grace and peace be with you all. Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
The first reading is from 1 Samuel verse, chapter 3, verse 1 to 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel, got up and went to Eli, Samuel, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of, of it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice of offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also. If you hide anything from me, all of that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew up. The Lord was with him and let none of his word fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The, Lord, the word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 129, reading responsibly. Lord, you have searched me out. O Lord, you have known me. You know my life. You trace my journeys and my resting places, and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you yourself created my inmost part. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you because I am marvelously made. Your words are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the death of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet I am finished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned. 
How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my life's man would need to be like yours. The second reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will always raise us by, his, by God's power. Do you know that your bodies are, remem- are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with the Lord. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Oh, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked Jesus, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Christ. As I stand here today, I can't help but look out and imagine all of the different calls each one of you have had in your life. Different calls into relationships, into community, into using your gifts and abilities whether it's been two years as the Patriots Gateway Center Executive Director, Shereen Sweeney, this month, or the day I saw a light bulb over, over Wayne Spitzer's head and said, yeah, tutor coordinator. You never know how the Spirit is going to work to call us as we gather in community. Yesterday at the Gospel Jamboree, I was delighted to hear a story about Dick Brittenson that he told of himself when he was a youth. His mom caught him crawling hands and feet across 11th Street. How old were you, Dick, at the time? About eight years old. And um, 
you'll have to forgive me for telling the story. You told it in public, so I thought, eh, it's a public domain story. I could always ask for forgiveness. And uh, his mom came out and said, Dick, get out of the street. Now, 11th Street wasn't as probably crazy as it is now, but, you know, it's still, you don't want, you know when you tell your kids to go play in the street? Dick really took it seriously. But he, what are you doing crawling on your hands and knees? And Dick said, uh, I wanted to see what the bug's view was. Something like that. Dick's always been down to earth. You've always been down to earth. You've always taken that perspective of your callings down to earth. And I thank you for that calling. I thank you that the Spirit works in our lives in so many different ways through the calling of the Spirit that calls us in so many different ways to get a different perspective of the bug's life. We're called by the Spirit in community in so many different ways, whether it's been two years since the prayer group started meeting at Patriots that Steve was a part of and continues to be a part of on Thursday mornings. Now they meet in different places. The Spirit calls a new pope, and then all of a sudden the Spirit calls and people in the community are realizing how much we are stronger together than we are apart, that we would gather Wednesday night for prayer at the cathedral. That there is just one holy Catholic church that we are called to. And that calling today is always instituted and started by the Holy Spirit. Today we hear of two different, three different calls. One of Samuel, a youth, naive and yet open-minded as we think about the Spirit, calling him at night. Often during the night when you can't sleep, it's sometimes the Spirit prompting you to pray for someone. It's often during the night that the Spirit comes to you and wakes you because there's so much on your mind and on your heart and soul that the Spirit calls out to you to lift those up. Samuel hears that calling and responds with the wisdom of the elder. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Say that with me. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. In order for a call to take place, a call of voca in Latin vocation or calling of the voice, one must also be able to hear. We've been given two ears and one mouth for a reason. That is the challenge in regards to listening to what the call is in our community and in our lives. The gospel lessons call is today both to Philip and Nathaniel. Philip's call is pretty straightforward. Follow me. And it doesn't even say, yes, I will follow. It just assumes that everybody knows Philip is following. And then the next part of that straightforward call is a different call to a different person. Philip then calls Nathaniel. The Spirit sometimes comes to us through other people. So as we think about Philip going to Nathanael, he speaks of Jesus, the one whom we find. We have found him about whom Moses and the law and the prophets write. Jesus, son of Joseph, which most likely they know that, oh, that's Joseph's son. And they all know what that means. Joseph's son, right. And he's from what town? Oh, he's from Rockford. Can anything good A pastor from Morningstar on Thursday, new to our gathering of Midtown Summit leaders, said just what people often feel about our community. And not from outside, but from inside. The burdens and struggles that we have. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus is that one. And Nathaniel is invited by Philip to simply come and see Come and see. Nothing like seeing, for seeing is believing. But never does Jesus wait for Nathaniel to come and see before Jesus goes to Nathaniel. Nathaniel has suspicion. He's not a passive observer. He's not somebody during the night who hears the voice. He's not somebody that Jesus came to right away and just said, follow me. 
Nathanael's call is through Philip, for Philip understood his friend Nathanael. Nathanael was down to earth, not passive. He knew the scriptures. He was critical, perhaps through this statement, very clear. He was not deceitful. Nathanael has a friend in Philip who knows him, who doesn't argue with him. Philip doesn't try to defend Jesus, Nazareth, or Joseph as the legitimate father of Jesus. He just simply says, come and see. And where do we find Nathanael? He is found walking toward Jesus, it says. Then Jesus sees Nathanael walking toward him. So he's actually on the way to seeing Jesus when Jesus comes to him. Nathanael is moving toward Jesus when Jesus sees this, and he comes to Nathanael, and he says, of Nathanael, before he longs, actually talks to him, he says, and announcing it to everybody, here now is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. He makes this announcement about Nathanael because he knows Nathanael, because he has seen Nathanael. And Nathanael says to Jesus, how do you know me? Jesus actually is somewhat quoting Psalm 32, which references this recognition that one who's been forgiven has no deceit or guile. Where did you get to know me? Jesus, and Nathaniel says of Jesus. Nathaniel's surprised that someone could give a verdict like that on such short notice without much knowledge of him. And Jesus says, I know you basically because I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Jesus saw where Nathaniel was. You see, you have to understand that the fig tree was a symbol of peace, was a symbol of these leafy branches, the recognition of peacefulness, and a place of prayer. Nathaniel was hanging out under the fig tree with his own longing and desire of knowing the covenant, knowing the law, his awareness of breaking the law, his inability to get to the temple to pay and atone for his sin and to gather in community to pray, in this case alone, on his own for mercy. He is aware of his need for grace. He's at the threshold of discipleship and makes the boldest statement of any of the disciples before he even starts this journey, knowing where Christ is going to go. His response recognizes that before the Holy One, under this fig tree, he knows he needs grace and mercy. He knows he gathered under that fig tree to pray alone as a down-to-earth kind of guy, knowing that he cannot trick anybody He cannot pull the wool over anyone's eyes about how good he is. He comes under this fig tree to pray. And that is where the Holy One met him. Under the fig tree, a man down to earth, knowing his need for grace and mercy. We gather under this fig tree this tree of mercy, the cross, knowing our need for grace and mercy. And this is where the call comes to us again, to follow. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future, Martin Luther King Jr. said. If you would have told me five years ago this past week that this is where we would be as a church community, No one would have known. No one would have known how many people we would have lost in five years. No one would have imagined that we would have a gathering of people like you and me here in this place, doing the will of God in whatever way the Spirit leads. It is this Spirit that calls out to us now as we discern the future, and says to us, come 
and see. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for all of our lives, for the gift of community, for the call is both individually to use our gifts and communally to walk together. We thank you for walking with us and guiding us as we see your mercy and grace under this fig tree, beneath the arms and grace of mercy that is the cross. We praise your name and sing your praises today. In Christ we pray. Amen. stand. Let us confess our faith in God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the was crucified and died in the He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of us. Amen. Gracious Father, how wonderful it is to be in your house today, 
to know and to feel your presence. Allow this time together to strengthen and heal us, to be rekindled in your love and your promises to us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all knowing, we praise and we honor all those who are in the position to lead, those who act and are decisive for others. From our world to our nation to our city to our state, all of those who are challenged, especially those in our church and our community, give them wisdom, knowledge, patience, and the willingness to decipher what is best for everyone. Lord, in your mercy. Father of today, there is a plenty of good things that have come out of Zion, just like Nazareth. As we prepare and discern for our annual meeting next week, may all the good and many great things that have been a part of our heritage here at Zion be in the forefront of next Sunday's meetings and decisions. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of healing, we pray for the family and the friends who have been hospitalized and for those who are recuperating in their home or a health center and for those with ongoing health concerns. We especially think of today Shirley Celebron, Linda Callahan, Adam Carlson, Barbara Nordenberg, Diane Knutson, Aldora Engloff, Mark Schwartzlow, Ian Ewing, Tom Johnson, Jean Bergquist, Rod Kalachi, Nedra Raxter, Bob Bandy, Alan Johnson, Ordell Swenson, and Gary Ulrich. And also, Lord, we pray for those homebound, those people who would like to be with us today, but are worshiping in their home with you. For Betty Anderson, for Patsy Carlson, and Marjorie Tubbs. And Lord, we especially pray for those families who have lost loved ones, who are continuing to hurt, who are continuing to mourn. We hold up especially to you the families of Kathy Teresi and Billy Weber. And finally, Lord, we pray for all who are suffering from spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental challenges, and for any that we name to you in our hearts or out loud now. Listen to those names, Lord, and be with them all. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine.
us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks. Gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray for Jesus Thomas. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive you all. God, 
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.